From the time I was little, I always had this idea of adopting. My husband and I, we really weren't on the same page. I had given up, to be honest. I had completely given up. We had our two boys and a girl. I was still working at home. I was really busy, and I couldn't imagine how we would have the time or money to pursue any adoption. One day, Dana and I and our young children visited a friend's church for a vacation Bible school, and I sat down with my friend Teresa, and she looked at me and she said, so, do you want to meet Ruth? And it took me a minute because I remembered she had talked about an, an orphan that she and her husband and their children were hosting from an orphanage in Uganda um, while she was in Maine for six months of physical therapy because sometime at or around birth, her brain was injured and she had cerebral palsy. And she waved her husband, Alan, over and he laid Ruth in Dana's arms. And it did not take Dana more than a moment before he turned to me and he said, so do you want to adopt her? We didn't want to just rush headlong into something that could really be a real difficulty for our family. And so we were able to start taking Ruth on weekends just to see what caring for her was like and to see how our other children would respond to having Ruth in the home and they absolutely adored her. A couple months after meeting Ruth, she actually moved into our home and we became her host family. We still didn't know at that point whether she was legally available for adoption, what those steps would take. It turned out that the only way for us to adopt Ruth, who had just turned two, was to take her back to Uganda go through the courts there, and then actually travel to um, East Africa in Kenya, where U.S. Uh, immigration had to be processed for her and then fly back to the United States. I was absolutely terrified. I literally felt like God was putting me in the center of his slingshot and just about to let go. But when I would just look at Ruth and how beautiful and joyful she was, I would think, why wouldn't you do this? <laughs> why wouldn't you want to bring this love and joy into your home? We arrived in Kampala and were able to go right to court and got the initial paper I needed to become Ruth's legal guardian. But we were waiting for her visa to come in from the United States government. And the best news I've probably ever received was the phone call from the U.S. Embassy in Nairobi saying the visa is here. And I was able to get it stamped actually one hour after the embassy had closed for the weekend that Friday. When we finalized her adoption um, the following Valentine's Day in the courthouse just on the street from where we lived, and I looked at my kids afterwards and I said, you know what this means? Ruth is your sister. She's your real sister, and no one can take her away, not ever. And that's what I really believed. You know, the day-to-day -day routine of meeting the needs of someone with really significant disabilities, it's very, very wearing on a family. One thing that made it easy taking care of Ruth is that she was so happy. You know, she was just really happy to be there and be part of the family. Ruth quickly learned spoken English so well that we were told she no longer qualified for deaf education. In first grade, Ruth transferred to our local public school. Ruth loved going to school. She was just this beautiful, happy little, you know, seven-year-old girl. We didn't have any warning that anything was wrong. She'd had a mild fever that um, went away and came back again. She seemed to get over it that weekend. And yet Sunday morning when my husband went down to check on her, um, she was sleeping in bed with Lydia. And, um, and Ruth wasn't breathing. So she had stopped breathing sometime in her sleep.
after losing Ruth, I wasn't sure I could trust God again. Because I felt like, we did what you said. <laughs> we loved her the way we loved our own children. How could you let this happen? And I, I couldn't imagine that he could be good and have taken Ruth away from us. He led me to passages you know, about turning our mourning into dancing and um, passages that spoke of, you know, how he would renew us through his word. And the more I kept reading the Bible, the more I was able to trust him. And, you know, I realized that God hadn't promised how long we would have Ruth. You know, he had just asked us to love her, and we did. It really was kind of a point at which I was able just to say, okay, <laughs> You're God, you know, not me. And I will trust you because I can see your plan in this, even though it's not the way I wanted it to end. I was able just to be thankful for the times that we did share with Ruth. And the thing I was the most thankful for <laughs> was that we had said yes. I think one of the, the real things that God taught me through this, you know, was that He wants to love broken and hurt people through us. But we don't have to be any kind of special to do that. We don't have to have any kind of degree or special you know, gifts. That even when we're broken and we're hurt, He can use us to meet the needs of the person that He puts in our path. That Jesus is there with us and that His love is enough. What lasts forever? Our faith our hope, and our love. Make it your desire today. Who can you love today? Who can you help today? Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family, and God bless you.